placebo to Milan again, and welcome to Linear Rock. Thank you. It's Thank you. our Thank you. pleasure to have you here. And um, we're happy to be all. here. <laughs> Great. So it's four years since Battle for the Sun, uh, but in October 2012, you released the NEP B3, uh, which broke the silence in a sense. Um, as a sort of teaser, we can call it like that. Um, why this choice to have a long break and why now is the perfect timing to come back? Well, normally we make a record, then we tour the album for two years. So we did that on Battle for the Sun. Then normally we take six months off and then we get back together and start writing the new one. Uh, this time, instead of taking six months off, we took 11 months off. That's the only difference. Okay. So it wasn't so long for you, actually. Or, or actually, it was the longer time off you took in a few years. Well, yeah, but we were still creative during that period. Okay. And, you know, we were still writing. Okay. I heard some rumors that you, Brian, wanted to release a solo album uh, in the meantime, and then, I mean, you're back with Placebo. So I wasn't planning on okay. releasing one. Mm -hmm. I was uh, working on a, a project on my own, okay. uh, just to see if I could do it without these guys. Um, and you couldn't? Well, I could do something, but it was very different from Placebo, and uh, that was the idea. I had a f Because it was only me, I had to play all the instruments myself. I'm not a very good drummer. Steve is much, Steve is much better. Uh, I'm not a very good piano player, you know. But Stefan is much better. So everything was very, very simple. And I had a restriction on myself uh, that I wasn't allowed to use distorted electric guitars. Um, but I was never... I. You know, I wasn't really planning a release or anything. It was a personal challenge for myself to see if I could do it and, and just to have the experience and see what it felt like. I think I prefer working with other people. Um, so I did that during that 11 months that we had off, and uh, some of those songs ended up on the new Placebo album. Too Many Friends was one of the songs. Scene of the Crime was one of the songs, and Hold On To Me was also one of the songs. Is it true that you recorded in two different different periods and that there was a tour in between? Is that correct? Okay, so you composed some of the material before, some on the road and some after, or what happened? Was a different proce process this time? Yeah, very, very different. We didn't compose on the road. Um, we started making this record kind of by accident. So uh, we were trying out a new producer, Adam Noble, and we just went into the studio to record some songs, but we were having such a good time that we thought that, hey, maybe we should stay in the studio and, and, and start up on working on our new album. Um, but because it wasn't planned, everybody had commitments, and we were, uh, you know, we had a tour booked, uh, Adam Noble had production commitments, yeah. um, so we ended up recording the album in short bursts over the space of uh, over a year, and yes, the first the first half of the record was recorded, written, recorded, and mixed in 2012, and then the, we got back together in 2013 and had to go back to zero and start okay. writing again. You know, so we yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so loud like love uh, is an album about love. Well, it's more about relationships. Okay, so yeah. I, I mean, you stated that it's not, you know, the I love you kind of stuff, you know, cheap stuff, but it's more deeper. And uh, so why now for you guys is the proper moment to release an album, you know, on such an important, let's say, emotion that, you know, it's part of life of everybody. And uh, It's not so strange. We've always made written songs about that over all our entire career. Okay. You know, that, that, that relationships has been the subject of so many of our songs. Yes. Um, but not the only one. Uh, while we were writing this one, it seemed it, apparent to us that a theme was emerging. And, uh, and we decided to, you know, to, to commit to that theme. So, uh, but it's not such an unusual thing for placebo. You think back to Without You, I'm Nothing. Yeah. That's a very that's a love a love song a very placebo love song, but a love song nonetheless. Okay. If you have to define what is love for you, what would you say? 
just listen to the record and you no, figure that out? No, no, okay. no, absolutely not. No, no, no. That's an impossible question to answer. Okay. Okay. Lots of things. Yeah. All right. Um, this is not actually an immediate, uh, easy listening record. Um, you need to go, you know, through it <laughs> a few times. Actually, is that a precise choice mm -hmm. or, a, or what? No. Mm -hmm. When we're writing music, it's just what you know. When, we, when we're working something out, it's just what feels right and sounds right to us. You know, you know we're happy yeah. with it. You know, we don't, we're not really thinking too far ahead and like too much what people can think about. It. I don't. I don't think that that's a good way to make a record. Mm -hmm. You got to make it where it feels good to you and sounds good to you and. And you know the fact that it's a slow burner is even better because you know some of my favorite records are, are the ones that you, you have to sit with for a lo bit longer. You know. Okay. The single "Too Many Friends" uh, starts off with the line, "My computer thinks I'm gay. I threw that piece of junk away." Uh, would you tell us the story behind the song? And did you actually write it in Paris? No, As, no, okay. no I, didn't, I didn't write it in Paris, but I was trying to find something that rhymed with gay. Okay. And I thought that Champs Elysees was quite good. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but that actually happened to me. One, uh, up, up until a certain point, my computer had advertised to me uh, exclusively as a heterosexual male. And then one day, I'm not too sure what I did, but I got up the next morning and the computer started advertising me to me specifically like a homosexual male. And I thought, that is really, really, really out there, man. Okay. You know, this, and, and, I, and I did say to myself, wow, my computer thinks I'm gay today. And that's kind of the start, the, the start of the idea for the song, you know? Okay. So it, it, it happened. You know, I must have watched some, I don't know what I watched, <laughs> maybe I do, maybe I'm just pretending to not remember <laughs> what I watched. <laughs> and in the video, the writer Brian Easton Ellis, the author of American Psycho, is the voiceover narrator. Uh, why this idea in this specific song, and is there any connection with the book and the movie? Well, he's written m many, many books apart from American Psycho. I think American Psycho is probably his most famous one right. uh, because it's so violent. Um, mm -hmm. I read his first two novels as a teenager, okay. Less Than Zero and The Rules of Attraction, and uh, they really spoke to me. Um, it wasn't our idea. It was uh, the producer and the video director of the video. It was their idea, and we thought it was... I, I'm a fan, so... Uh, that was yeah. that was very it's that that was one of the reasons and it also was very appropriate because he we're you know the song touches on social networking so and he is an avid Twitter user so uh, we thought that that you know that it, it it was he was the perfect man for the job. Um, the song that closes the album is called Bosco. Which is actually... We wrote that in an okay. Italian forest. Oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's called Bosco. Okay, yeah. 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 that's a very special song. Um, so, that in a Bosco, actually, you had the inspiration to write that? Yes. Okay, so we that's built a, cool. We built a campfire, <laughs> mm -hmm. we okay. took magic mushrooms, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Bosco wine. And uh, we put face paint on, and we we uh, sort of did like a sort of a, sh a sh shamanic ritual in this Italian forest. Okay. And uh, people from the other side of uh, you know from another universe, they sort of came mm -hmm. and uh, they took our our hands and they placed them on on like little miniature pianos <laughs> and uh, we wrote the song that way. Okay, so you yeah. have the script for the next video. So <laughs> <can go there>. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, for a new band approaching a music career nowadays, internet is the primary vehicle. But what would you suggest um, to do, you know, beside that, uh, upon your experience as a band? I think uh, the most important thing is to stick to uh, stick to your guns. Okay. By that I mean uh, do what feels right for you. Follow your own voice and follow the sound that you have in your head. And uh, although it's hard, hard to, to get started, hard to get an audience, hard to get hard, hard to make money for for a lot of a lot of new artists. The most important thing is just to keep doing it. You know, opportunities and possibilities will come your way. Okay. And I think the more you give out. 
you know, things will come back. You know, I think it's a lot of hard work and just try try to get your voice heard as, as much as possible with, with any means that's available to you. So stick to your music is still the most important thing. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to do what makes you, you have to make the kind of music that makes you excited, not what is fashionable. Okay. Otherwise, you won't last very long because fashion changes all the time. Yeah. So, did success change uh, you or influence your growth uh, as a single musician, as a band, personally? What do you think? We've been successful since we were very young. Yeah. I was 22, mm -hmm. Stefan was 20 when uh, we had our first hit record. So, uh, it, uh, how much, of course, it had a, a very major effect on us, but, you know, um, we, and we are very different people today than, than we were when we were 20, um, thankfully. Uh, otherwise, it would mean that we wouldn't, wouldn't have grown, you know, or evolved as human beings. Um, yeah, we've very much grown up in the spotlight, which means you make a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. in public, people take photographs. And then you see them, and you're very embarrassed, okay. you know. Um, but uh, personally, I have no regrets. I don't know about you, Stefan. No, I think it's uh, it, it's the experience are there to uh, to make you who you are today. I think it's accepting everything that you've been through because at the end of the day, you cannot change yeah. the past. Um, and I think it's just uh, you know a testament to. I still wanted to do this, you know, that music is still the most important thing for mm -hmm. us, which has kind of carried us through, you know, and that's what we're here today, really. Brian, you're considered a sex symbol. How do you live with that? I don't. <laughs> um, I don't see a sex symbol in the mirror when I wake up in the morning, Okay. you know? Um, and I'm very grateful for that. I think I would be a, an unpleasant person to spend time with if I did. Um, uh, so, I don't think about it. I think a lot of people have, a, you know, a lot of opinions about me. I hope most of them are positive. I know some of them are negative, and that's okay. But if I am to concern myself on a daily basis with that, then I would, be, I would begin to feel very self-conscious and inhibited, and that's really not good for an artist. Okay. Because an artist, what, they're, you know, what they do is that they express themselves in, a, in an uninhibited way. We ha as an artist, you have to take risks. If you're worried about, you know, keeping up appearances, then, or, you know, what other people think about you, then you won't take any risks. So, I don't, con I don't consider myself to be a sex symbol. I'm, I, I, I find it quite funny that a lot of people do, but I'm also, um, you know, it's it's very 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 flattering for me, yeah. you know, because it's not what I see in the mirror okay. at all. <laughs> okay. Recently, Russia is becoming a very tough country to play for you know some artists. Uh, the visa is difficult to have uh, because of a law uh, that do not allow propaganda about sex and drugs and rock bands that are in some senses related to death. Because, um, you know, they don't, they don't want to risk uh, any message, you know, against that law. What's your position on this matter, if you want to tell mm. something about it? Well, Elton John is going to Russia, mm. and he's a great inspiration to us all. I think, I think to boycott that country because of a government's policy yeah. would be um, a real shame. I don't really believe in artistic boycotts. Um, because uh, if we were to boycott all the countries whose policies we disagreed with, there might be four countries on this planet that we could go on tour with, <laughs> yeah. you know? So um, we will continue to go because we have a lot of fans in, in Russia, and uh, we go and bring our message of tolerance mm. Yeah. Um, and togetherness and unity, and that's what we represent. And so we go there, and, and and we, you know, just by playing our music in that country, we are a force for good and a force for change. Okay. 
Very quick last question, or they're gonna kill me? Right on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. so you, you've been defined glam rock, alternative rock, great pop. Which definition do you feel more appropriate in 2013 for placebo? None. No, I, I don't know, <laughs> because I, um, those, those labels mean nothing, you know. Pe yeah. You know, you ask one person what is, you know, what is alternative rock, and they'll give you one answer. And you ask the other person what is alternative rock, and they'll give you a completely different answer. It's so, I, I think we're just we're a rock and roll band. You know, that's what we do. Yeah, we make which is the best. we make music with guitars, loud guitars and drums, mm -hmm. and some and some really really cool synthesizers. Um, that's what we do. Okay. Very last one, sure. Um, ten years ago, you played Boys Don't Cry with Robert Smith. Mm -hmm. If you have to define in one world, how, how was that experience? What would you say? One word. Okay, if you can have more if you want. <laughs> it was an honor. Okay. Yeah. That's the best word you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys very much for your time. Oh, thank you, nice talking, talking to you. We'll wait for your tour to come back to Italy soon. Yes, we'll yeah. be Do back. Do you have dates already or uh, yeah, still in the can? We're okay. playing in Bologna in November. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that one, but that's one show, right? This year. Yeah, yeah. but next year you're going to come we back. We hope so, yeah. Okay, cool, very much. Thank All you right, very, very well. much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right.